Now after the Core i7-930 results, I will be trying one of the more rare X58 CPUs. So I actually found one piece of the Core i7-940 CPUs some time ago and based on the results I could see on hardwarebot.org it should be probably the easiest x58 Bloomfield CPU to break the top scores with. So the frequency level is quite low actually so it is one of the older stepping Bloomfield CPUs so the C1 or C0 stepping but the frequency level is quite low. So for like W Prime 32, the top score is made at like 4.95 on cascade cooling, 1024M. I would assume the frequency range is somewhere around like 4.8 or 4.9. The single threaded stuff is at 5 gigahertz and higher, so it's still like not super easy, but it's definitely easier than many of the other like Bloomfield CPUs like Core i7 950, 920, 965 and 975. So I have never run this CPU before actually. So this is the first time I'm ever even trying this, but in the end all of these Bloomfield CPUs are the same. They are just the very same CPU with different max multiplier. Same thing as Wolfdale on 775 or similar. So uh, obviously with the higher models like 965, 975, the whole thing is easier because you aren't so base clock limited compared to the lower end models like, 9, like 920, 930. On 940 we can actually use the multiplier of 23, so uh, it shouldn't be that hard, so uh, let's see what happens. So uh, I'll uh, start again, so I'll use both Windows XP and Server 2003 and I'll first try to see how high it will uh, run just in Windows XP and if it's good I will move on to Server 2003 for the single threaded stuff. Same rig as before, Rampage 3 Black Edition, T-Rex Container, KPX Thermal Paste and three sticks of Corsair Dominator GDX2 Memory and Superflower Elite X8 Pack, 2000 watt Platinum Power Supply. No heater plate whatsoever once again as I want some cold to spread on the VRM area and on the north bridge on the motherboard. But yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, I've managed to boot into the operating system just fine at 4.85. So the top results are made at 4.95 for W prime 32, 4.93 seconds. And 1024M was at 4.88. So uh, definitely sure there's some headroom remaining. So just minus 100 at the moment. Okay, so we are already close on the top score. So let's put like, this could probably be enough. So this is like maybe close to four nine. That's five. Alright, it's already 4.9, so I think this should be... Now you see the multiplier bug, so uh, the multiplier dropped to 22 when you raise the FSP or the base clock too much in the operating system, but it's actually still at 23. So this is not correct, so we still have 23 performance if we try to run something. So this is more or less an issue for CPU-Z validations, nothing else. So if we try to run this now, if it passes, if it's stable, we have the correct performance still. So uh, I'll try to show you. So you see, we still have correct performance. We are closing in on the top score. So uh, do not get worried. So the only thing, or the only way to get higher frequency on CPU Z is to go back to the bars and try to boot a higher base bar. So this one should be enough for the top score. So it was 4938 by some Danish guy I think on cascade cooling. That's the new top score in W Prime 32 with the Core i7-940. So uh, now I will go back to the 
pulse or try to boot at much higher uh, frequency so, uh, so that we can actually get some real scores in. I don't want to make scores that are just a tiny bit better than the previous top scores. I want to make some real like gain. 489 versus 4938. So yeah, it was definitely the easiest Bluefield CPU to date, at least what I've overclocked myself. Okay, we are closing in on the maximum frequency, so 51 doesn't want to uh, at least put into the operating system straight away. So the maximum on W.32 might be pretty close to the 51. 49. Cold bug seems to be somewhere around like 130 or 130 something. So 5,076. 46 Uncle, I still wanna give a bit more. Try 51 again. 51. C4.7 something. Okay, I might just briefly try the 1024 amp because there's no need to push this overly much. One five nine is the top score. Five seconds. And okay, that's the new uh, top score in W Prime 1024 I'm 154.031 seconds at 5022 uh, MHz on the Core i7-940. Previous top score was 159.2 by some Slovenian guy at a bit under 4.9 on the CPU. So this is a clear improvement from that score and also the Ankar was at a pretty good uh, value as well, which is uh, Four five eight five. Okay, try again. But okay, that's the new, uh, like, clear improvement on the Pi Fast. So 16.42, previous top score was 16.7 uh, by that Danish guy, I think, at 5077 or close to 5080. This was at 5140. And very good encore as well, 4916, and memory close to 1800, 686, 21, common rate 1, Rampage 3 Black. The, uh, this CPU is actually pretty flaky, so uh, sometimes if you just uh, get weird debug codes all over the place in between bench sessions, you have to clear the CMOS and start all over again. So pretty difficult, but at least I got it, so pretty happy once again. Now 1am. Seven nine five three is top score by some American guy on one M. 
sure this is it. We have 7938. So 7938, previous top score 7953 uh, by some American guy at like 5080. So clear improvement once again. So now I'm only missing 32M and validation. Okay, so the target is 226. Two two six four validation close to five point two. Okay, press F seven. Past. Uh, we get the bug again. That's 5-2. Okay, that will do. Go back down. And okay, that's finally a new top score in Superpy 32M with the Core i7-940. This was actually very intense because for some reason I had a lot of like flaky uh, crashing issues. I thought it was the Anko, but it wasn't. It was CPU core related. But anyway, so 7 minutes, 8.375 seconds. Previous top score by T-Rex from Denmark at 7 minutes, 14.828 seconds. So it's only like 6 second improvement. The efficiency wasn't the best. But I can of course uh, run it again if I want to, but I just wanted to get this score done as quickly as possible because I don't want to waste all of my remaining LM2 on this CPU. So pretty okay I guess, 5067 on the core, Anko at 4850 almost, and memory is at like 1766861, common rate 1. So uh, yeah, now I have all of the 940 top scores and that's pretty much it. And okay, that's pretty much it. So pretty good results overall with the Core i7-940, considering that this was the only 940 CPU I ever tested. So, uh, so far this is the only 940 that has been validated at 5.2+. plus. I just checked the uh, validation file at the CPU-Z uh, validation page. It's currently in unchecked form, which is normal when you use the XOC mode in CPU-Z. So it was a bit over 5.2. Then uh, PyFast, I think my fastest run was like 16.44 or well around 16.4 anyways. The previous top score was like 16.7. SuperPy 1M, I got a few uh, runs that were faster than the previous top score made by that American guy. So like 7.93 and I think the fastest run was like 7.875. 32M was definitely the hardest part as uh, I had very weird like random crashes towards the end like overall on the single threaded test so it was very flaky like very random and I couldn't figure out that what's going on and I had to clear the CMOS quite often so uh, I only got that one run which was like six seconds uh, faster than the previous top score made by that T-Rex guy from Denmark like eight years ago or nine years ago so uh, there's definitely a lot more headroom remaining on that one I had a pretty good run running at close to 5.1 with good efficiency but then it crashed at like loop 4 or loop 5 but that will do for now w prime 32 i got a few runs that were faster than the previous rank one score so like 4.8 something and i think the fastest run was like 4.7 something and uh, i think my improvement was like five seconds on the w prime 1024m so uh, pretty good session overall so all of the important top scores with the 940 so now i can add the core i7 940 to my result library as well so i have the 920 930 940 top scores rank one validation with 980x i think then uh, all of the rank two scores with 950 i think i still have some with the 970 although 970 is not really my favorite x58 cpu although it was a very interesting model back in the day 
as it was a 6 core model with much lower price tag compared to the Golf Town 980X and 990X CPUs, so the extreme variants. So I might give it a go with another 950, hopefully I can find a better one that could challenge the rank 1 scores made by Matt26 from the UK and then the remaining ones will be the Core i7 Extreme Bloomfield, so 965 and 975. Those are very hard CPUs to bench on LN2, it's very hard to find a rank 1 capable CPU, but I'll see what I can do over time. So uh, yeah pretty happy and these results will be uploaded to hardwarebot.org once again so definitely check them out if you are interested in them give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and maybe check out my patreon page as well if you want to support my work and yeah thanks for watching some of my legacy overclocking content once again and i will see you on the next one